Isaac Vivian Alexander Richards was the most awe-inspiring batsman of the 80s, scoring more than 8,500 runs. He still holds the record for the fastest test century, scored in just 56 balls. Well, I remember the first time I ever came across Viv, and I, obviously I didn't know, uh, you know, the, the name was just up on the scoreboard, Richards. I didn't know who the hell Viv Richards was. And Richards has dispatched that with all the authority which we've seen from him this season. It's a magnificent hit. It wasn't quite there, but uh, who cares? Oh. Dear, oh dear, what a magnificent shot. He came in, bang, straight away, over mid-off, bang, over mid-on. Four fours on the trot off Jeff Hammond, who was a very accurate bowler and a very good fast bowler. And he just kept banging him straight down the ground in the air, you see. Fifth one, he's tried to do it again, nicked it, caught by Rodney Marsh, and uh, Viv Richards on his way, you see. So we're all gathered around, well done, Bomber, you know, you've got, uh, you've got this guy out. And Bomber just looked at him, he said, yeah, yeah. He said, nobody can keep bloody doing that. And nobody can just keep hitting a fast bowler back over his head. Well, you know, I saw Viv continue to do it for many, many years. I believe in myself. Uh, there was a lot of people who sometimes saw the way I, I swaggered to the crease or whatever, would think that uh, I'm the cockiest so-and-so in the world, or the most arrogant so-and-so in the world. But I had no regrets about that. I wanted to be best. It's not just the way you walk, but uh, what's, what was in my heart, you know, I just felt totally confident. I, I had no fear about uh, a particular bowler, whether he was going to, to knock my head off or anything. Uh, it was something that I said, if I die out there, I die. I, I believed in that because of how passionate I felt to my sport, you know. I don't think many people do feel the way I do. Richard just got on to 83. Murray Bennett is the bowler, and your commentators Tony Gregg and Bill Lurie. Oh, and what a shot! Oh, what a start by Vivian Richards. Bennett just on a good length, got to the half bow and lofted the ball, as safe as a church, at to long on. And my word, that was beautifully timed. I begrudgingly, you know, used to enjoy Richard watching him bat. There's no, no question. He had something special. Just the even when he walked through the gate, coming out on the field, the game changed, had a, had a different feel to the way the game was uh, progressing. Uh, he had an awe and a presence and a swagger when he, when he came out to the, the crease. Oh, the short ball straight away and Richards confidently smashes it to the boundary. Oh, is he looking dangerous? Yeah, Viv, uh, probably the most dangerous batsman that I saw. I mean, there were plenty of pretty dangerous batsman uh, that I played with and against. But he was the sort of bloke that could turn a test match on his own in a very short space of time. The spinner's just a little loose early on. Another full toss by Matthews. And that's beaten the mid-off and there's no way in the world that's not going to be four. He moves on to 97. He was an explosive player and uh, I mean half an hour of Viv could destroy a, a game of cricket for you. Uh, and then, you know, as a one-day player, his, his fielding and his Strength, I mean, unbelievable. And Richards obliges by going over the top for four. He just came out to confrontation. I mean, he came out to let you, as he walked out to bat, he let you know, right, the game is on. You know, I'm coming for you, um, so you better give me the best you've got. And it, and it didn't matter who the bowler was. Dennis Silly, Jeff Thompson, it didn't matter. And I mean, he just, he took them on. And that's into the seats, well into the seats. I think there's probably only one that I rate higher in world standing, and that was the Garfield Sobers than Viv Richards. Viv, on his day, could do uh, what no other batsman I've seen could do. He just destroyed very good bowling. He's hammered that. Joel Garner had to just move out of the way very quickly. And that's He's still found a gap, and he's going to get a boundary, I would say. Once that gets on the uh, practice wickets, it'll absolutely race away. Here it goes. It's down over the sideboard. It's a beauty. Six by a mile. That was always on, and Greg Matthews appreciates that. It was a great stroke. It wasn't a slog. He put the foot down. The follow-through was there. His third six, and what a massive hit. And there it is. 
Tremendous applause, a standing ovation for the great player. A great moment for Vivian Richards. Starting the day on 82, not out. He's now taken his total to 200. Viv Richards was awesome. I mean, I, I would really pity being Dennis Lee or Jeff Thompson being playing when Viv Richards was in full flight. I suppose I was lucky enough to come in towards the end of his career and still he was a fantastic player then. And, and that knock of 146 um, was just unbelievable. Um, the quicker you bowled, the further he seemed to hit you. Um, he just had no fear. Uh, West Indies in that time, their top four was terrific and with Greenwich, Haynes, Richie Richardson at that time was in pretty good form and Viv Richards. And there was, real no, there was really no encouragement to get a couple of wickets to get Viv Richards out there. Well, there's no struggling there. He really put that away very well indeed. We worked out during World Series cricket that he was such a good leg side player that bowling off stump to him, which you do to most batsmen, was like bowling leg stump to anyone else because he tended to come across to off stump and then hit everything through the leg side. So we decided that that far outside off stump was the best place to bowl. That was more like off stump to him. And we had a lot of success for a, you know, for a few games, two or three games. We had him caught behind, caught in the slips. And we concentrated for the rest of that season on, on his off stump. Biggest mistake we ever made because we then turned him into not only being the best leg side player in the world, he became one of the best offside players as well. So we just doubled his repertoire. And he's lifted that over the top of long off and that's a big hit. That's a huge hit for six by Richards. That is a magnificent stroke. Yeah, my recollections are his duel for Steve Wall. In my era, it was still Steve Wall. We've seen Dennis Lilly take it to him and him take it to Dennis Lilly and Tomo. Uh, but so Steve Wall was the one that was keen just to bounce him. Uh, of course, he didn't wear the helmet or anything. Uh, Stephen knocked the hat off a couple of times and Viv responded with the swagger and dusted sure off the cap, put him back on and sort of said, next time you do that, oh, I'm going to lose it. And uh, so Stephen loved that sort of uh, duel. So it was always uh, tit for tat, Steve Waugh and Viv Richards, but the confidence of the man, the way he could come out and decimate any attack, and it was, it was at the end of his career. I'm pretty glad that I didn't get him at his peak. Four more for Richards, and that's his victory. That particular game, we had to talk about playing against the West Indies and being intimidated by them, and, and most of it was directed at the batsmen, not being intimidated by their, their four quick bowlers at the time, but I just found it intimidating to bowl to their top four. Um, they were fantastic players, and, and their records would, would state that, but um, to get out there and have Viv Richards come in when they were already established on a, on a pretty good wicket, um, it was just awesome, and no matter what you did, um, he just seemed to take you on, and, and you thought you were a bit of a chance, so you'd bowl sort of straight at him, and that's where his strengths are on the league side. So, yeah, he was just awesome. Well, there's nothing wrong with that one. That was really hammered from it off. Viv, everyone knows, he hits the ball pretty hard, and uh, as a cricketer, I had reasonably slow reflexes, and I felt reasonably intimidated bowling to Viv, and reasonably scared bowling to Viv because he used to whack them back at you about head high and they're going like a traceable and I couldn't see them. Um, and you, you almost contemplate bowling in a helmet or alternatively bowling and then just sort of running to extra cover to get out of the way. But uh, I think there was one occasion there that he nearly took my head off. Bibbs after him. That's a magnificent shot. That actually did dip away a little bit in the air. Richard's down the wicket and uh, what an aggressive shot this is. I remember vividly Tim May's eyeballs in the Perth test when Viv smashed one back at him and just sort of parted his hair. Maisie's eyeballs were just wide as, as golf balls and uh, I remember that night after Viv had decimated us, uh, Tony Dottermade, myself who'd had an average innings with the gloves and Tim May were walking through Kings Park back to the hotel. This is our last test. We all thought this is our last test. So they are the memories that I've had of Viv. Uh, and it was at the end of his career, one of his last tours. So, to, to me, he must have been uh, right up with their best. No miss hits go over the fence. He's gone again. This is down as a man down there. It's Kim Hughes. He's backing back to the fence. He's caught it. Fine catch. And that's the end of a great innings. A fine catch to dismiss 
the great Vivian Richards, the fence was there, Kim Hughes kept his cool, and the great batsman departs to a standing ovation. The members standing, the outer standing, and all the commentators giving Viv Richards a generous round of applause. A superb innings.